Hello everybody and welcome to a, another review. Now, I don't often do reviews, but when I do, I do them of locos that particularly take my fancy. And today we're looking at the rather superb Hombi B1. Now, I picked this model up yesterday, no sorry, forgive me, um, Saturday, the 7th of June 2014 at the Keith Worth Valley's Diesel Gala. Um, I won't say how much she was. But uh, she wasn't cheap, but I feel I paid a good amount of money, as you don't really find Hornby B1s. Um, the only one I've ever seen recently, actually, uh, was the LNER one, Rodeo. Uh, but I, I never really wanted the LNER livery, as I thought the BR livery looked a lot nicer. Now, these locomotives were designed originally by Sir Nigel Gresley, but unfortunately... He had a sudden death in 1941. So, when Edward Thompson was made Chief Mechanical Engineer for the LNER, he simplified the design and presented what we have before us. As you'll note, um, Thompson did quite a lot of things that people liked, but also a lot of things that people didn't like. For example, he was responsible for the Thompson A1s and A2s, the B1s, the L1s, uh, and uh, a few new designs. Uh, however, he did redesign Gresley's P2 Mercados, such as Cock of the North, and the newest one that is currently being built, num number 2118, Prince of Wales, um, into a rather ugly looking Pacific, which was a big shame because they were beautiful. But we are focused on the B1, but before we take a look at the model, I would just like to uh, demonstrate Hombi's packaging for this, as it is quite nice. Uh, as you'll see, you know, we've got the usual sleeve, um, as you do. Sorry about this, uh, I'll just reposition the camera. But, uh, yes, as you see, we have our usual box, however, it is in this sort of block of ice type packaging, as you'll see the instructions are in the back there. But uh, it is very nice, and as usual with Hornby, on the back we have a picture of not just the class, but the specific, specific locomotive. As you'll see, this is 61138, and uh, so is the model look, 61138. And I won't read any of this for you, but there is the full, well, not full, but brief information on the class. Now there are two survivors of this class, there is um, one in this sort of livery, this BR Black livery which is resident of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway and there is also another B1 which is in British Railway's experimental apple green Mayflower. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where that loco is based or who owns it but she does quite a few mainline tours that, um, in in the north, really. I think she's done some down south, I'm not too sure. But anyway, let's get on to the model. Now, the locomotive and tender are permanently coupled. However, this gap, as you'll see here, isn't actually the standard for train set curves. And if you look, that gap is pretty good. If I just bring the model to an angle, there, see, that's the standard gap. And if you don't believe me, I'll just turn the model over, as you'll see, here on the coupling bar, the screw is actually furthest back to allow maximum radius. So that is pretty good, and she does run absolutely fine on 4th, 3rd and 2nd radius, um, as all of which are involved on my layout. As you'll see, this wire here leading to the plug is for the 8-pin decoder socket in the tender. 8-pin is Hornby standard, whereas Batman seems to be going 21-pin with the majority of their locos. So 8-pin isn't going to cost you near as much as a um, Batman 21-pin, and also don't have any complications with them. Now, if we just focus on the front of the loco for a minute, uh, we'll see she does have some rather brilliant detailing. Uh, as you'll see, I have fitted the extra details, such as vac pipes, the coupler, vac pipe and the coupler on the front, as well as all the brake rods, which I'll show you in a moment. As you'll see, not something not too common is the separately fitted smoke box of dart. Now, to me, that makes all the difference to the overall look of the front of the loco. As 
if it's moulded, it just doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right, and it just looks a lot better. However, it is very delicate, so you will want to be careful. Sprung buffers, as always from Hornby and uh, Batman. Lovely, beautiful hand railing, and just look at the valve gear on there. That is just superb. As you'll see, it's quite close to Gresley's, as this was his original design. And as you'll see, this is quite typical of Thompson's designs. A completely level, straight boiler, not tapered like on Black Fives and um, Pacifics. And if we can, if I can just show you in that cab, I don't know if you can see quite with the light, but there you go. Look at that detail. There's separate, there is needles and numbers on all the gauges. The regulator is separately fitted. All the little handles are fitted. There's even bucket seats and a reverser in there, which is just brilliant. Now, if we just have a quick look at the tender, the coal load, as far as it looks removable, I haven't removed it yet. It is quite tricky, but it's. It's okay, Hornby's coal loads um, on newer models like this seem to be pretty good, but you might want to replace that and weather up in that tender, so that's what I intend to do. And then, of course, vac pipe, coupler and spring buffers on the back. Also a NEM pocket coupler, if I just show you that. You see there, that's a NEM coupler. And uh, as you'll see there is all the brake rods. Now... The model, however it looks convincing and perfect, isn't all perfect and there are some things you can't feature like um, I do have, in fact I can just grab it for you, I have a picture that I bought at the North Yorkshire Malls Railway when I was last up there of their B1, here it is coming through um, Gothland Station or Aidensfield Station if you have ever seen Heartbeat, but as you'll see she has some electric lights and piping all along there as well as other bits and bobs but most importantly something I feel Hornby because you know things like that yeah you can't quite include I would intend to do but something they could have included as you'll see the little vac pipe there and the guard behind the coupler now and oh, sorry to cut off again but also some little pipes there now they're things that Hornby could have included as they do on their Pacifics so I'm just a bit confused as to their choice but hey it's Hornby come on folks we're all a bit used to Hornby by now but as you'll see on this front truck there is space for a coupler but the reason this model could have done with a guard is as you'll see that NEM bit that NEM pocket sticks out and the coupler can catch on it sometimes if I, as I have had problems with but if we just look just you might not be able to see it because obviously the colour and the lighting but I don't know if you can yeah, you can just about make it out there is actually space between the chassis and the body just there for a guard for a, um, a chain guard for um, sorry the coupler guard so I don't know why that isn't there but separately other details that aren't fitted to the model are little steps and the cylinder drain cocks um, however the cylinder drain cocks aren't really on the steps they're not really something you can use on your average train set uh, you can but they will cause the front bogey not to perform at its best should we say and they might get damaged broken and lost so if you have if you have um, a layout with superbly gentle curves with made from like flexi track then by all means go for it it's the same with the flanged wheel under cabs of pacifics but um, really, I do recommend the B1 for any layout, um, where, particularly northeastern layouts, um, which is what I'm kind of going for. Um, layouts under the LNER control that these uh, these fit in well. But if you're doing any from any layout from preserved or anything like that, then yeah, I I highly recommend Hornby's uh, Thompson B1. So thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you all later.